Do you desire the new stylish weapon cosmetics in Free Shooty Game 2020, but only have two carrots and a raisin in your e-wallet due to questionable financial decisions? Well then, it's time to get out of your cave and embrace the wonders of modern technology such as fire, agriculture, nuclear warfare, and artificial intelligence. No, not that kind of AI. Specifically, this video will be about GANs, aka Generative Adversarial Networks. These have already accomplished revolutionary things such as making Orange Lifeform do the funny dance, and somehow turning Ben Shapiro into even more of a living meme than he already is. Let's say hypothetically, Ki Anu Shungis was real. In this thought experiment, we can suppose that the resulting organism would be wholesome, 100 and breathtaking. Another thing GANs are good for is style transfer, the task of taking the style from one image and applying it to another. So things like horse to zebra, summer to winter, faces to... I'm sorry, what the fuck? As for Valorant skins, the focus of this video, this would mean taking an image of a gun with a skin as a style, and transferring the style to an image of said gun without the skin. For this, I'll be using CycleGAN, a model that works pretty well when you want to swap textures but keep overall structure the same in an image. First, I'll replace the horse zebra pictures with the weapon skin pictures. The A2B generator will take in we'll photos judge if that image was the Explaining all of this in depth would take way too long for this video. So instead, I'll just explain what I did and none of the original stuff. Since the original paper uses data sets that are in the scales of thousands, I decided to match this by taking around 2,000 frames of both skins. That is, I recorded myself walking circles around every map with the normal phantom, took every 10th frame, and then recorded myself walking circles around every map with the singularity phantom, again taking every 10th frame. This was really boring and yes, I had to do it for every skin in the video. Since we only care about the gun, I cut out the bottom right corner and ignored the rest of the screen. I scaled this to a 256 by 256 image and then trained the neural network on both groups of videos. Now I won't show any code because dumping your shit code on the screen in the middle of a YouTube video not strictly about programming is like putting on a hard hat and dumping a bucket of actual shit on someone in the University of Toronto library. I will look in the description though. Now as you can see I'm clearly not a very good UI designer, please don't bully me, but here I can just press train and... Now some of you may be thinking, no, don't neural networks take weeks to train? And to that I say, haha, -ha, RTX 3090 go. Sadly, even on a 3090, it takes me around 20 minutes to get through a single epoch. I let it go for 200 epochs, but it's probably not going to actually take that long. Here's the training process fast forwarded. Okay, but memes aside, there's some interesting things to see here. 8 minutes into training, the model has learned a bit about the UI, but it hasn't learned any major structural changes from the skin. It's a bit like this. Okay! It's time for one of our favorite games on the show called What If It Was Purple? Let's say it purple. After this, I started to get worried because for the next two hours, it did nothing besides tinting the image purple. But then it started to add the little light towards the front of the Singularity Phantom. Now, it wasn't even fucking close at putting this in the right spot, but it finally felt comfortable adding something new. Fast forward just 15 minutes and it had the spot down pretty well. Another hour or so and it started to add the holographic part towards the stock. Then after just five hours of training, I'd say it was pretty good. Now let's run the entire source footage through the neural network, accounting for scaling and cropping accordingly. I would definitely say it gets the job done, but there's a few problems to go through. For one, it doesn't do any of the animations associated with the skin. I think this is acceptable since transferring the animations would be extremely difficult. Secondly, you may notice that the corner is a bit blurry. This isn't really fixable since running an image larger than 256 by 256 through the network would be too computationally expensive and training would take way too long. The other problem is this box around the corner. I'll get back to that, but first I wanted to try out some of the other skins I got my hands on. The neural network gets the main details down pretty quickly, but fails to hold this for long, constantly going back and forth. Due to this, it wasn't super easy to find out what checkpoint I should pick as the final version. I went through this video a few times and picked 10 points I consider to be the best. Now, 
to get to the best one, whoever's flaws I notice first goes right into the fire. So immediately, these two can't even get the fucking UI right, so goodbye. On further inspection, these two aren't getting the wolf head, so into the fire you go. And with this one, the background's just off, so... Okay, so zooming in this much, it looks like these two are the best ones. Now, I think these ones are kind of in a hard tie, but... I'm gonna go with the left one just because it seems to better reproduce the background. So, like before, pretty good results, but the same issues are still there. The corner is a bit blurry, and there's a very noticeable box around the gun. Now, I tried it with the Oni Phantom as well, and hey, it looked like it was maybe getting somewhere initially, but then it just went back to being shit. Okay, so rewinding a bit, I really should deal with this weird box this thing. Needs to stop. So, so why is this ah. happening? Well, when we run the corner alone through the network, it isn't even seeing the rest of the image, so it doesn't account for it. Now, I could fix this manually with a crop and masking, but this is absurdly tedious and takes forever. If only there were a way to automate this. Okay, so back in October, I was reading a paper on salient object detection while working on a Valorant montage. So I started thinking, hmm, how can I use this groundbreaking technology for a shitty gaming montage? So I found a GitHub repo online and modified it a bit to work with videos and made some cool edits like this. Back to the original problem. How can we use this to get rid of the box? Well, we need to separate the background from the gun. Running the whole frame through, we see it doesn't really work so well because it's not really clear what's quote unquote salient. How about just the corner? Well, that seems to work a lot better. So we overlay this and where the mask is black, we use the original frame and where it's green, we use the edited one. This ends up being really easy in code. Put all this together and the box is gone. That being said, it does flicker a bit and it's clear it's not perfect. It varies a lot clip to clip. Also, this is far more computationally expensive. The VRAM cost isn't very high, so I think anyone with a 4GB NVIDIA card could run this, but it's definitely slower. I got the time per frame down to 14 milliseconds for the original version, but with the masking model, it goes all the way up to 60 milliseconds per frame. Now, the link to my code, which should be very easy to use for converting or training, will be in the description below. I'll conclude this video with a montage of some clips edited using the model.